Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about the distributive property. So for our warm-up, that was a review um, from the last chapter. And remember our rule for negative, same signs add, different signs subtract. So for number one, I have a negative and a negative. That's the same sign. So I add my two numbers. And please remember that your bigger number tells you the sign. So my answer is negative 20. Um, for number two, I have a negative and a positive. That's different signs. And according to our rule, different signs subtract. So I get two. Bigger number tells you the sign. So it's negative two. Um, and for number three, this is a really important thing to remember. Whenever you see that double negative, it turns into a positive. So I really have 5 plus 16, which is positive 21. Um, so in algebra, we're going to be working with um, what we call variables. And the variables are the letters that you see in your problems. So we don't just work with numbers, we're working with numbers and letters. And the variables, the letters, stand for things we don't know. So if you don't know a certain value, we give it a variable. Okay, We give things that we don't know variables or letters. Okay, so now we're going to, today we're going to focus on the distributive property. We're going to use this property all the time. So I want to first start out with, what does the word distribute mean? Think about um, a, the book room distributes books. A lunch lady distributes sandwiches. Um, so the word distribute means give out. Okay. So, we can use this in algebra by distributing certain numbers. So, say we have a, something like this. Remember, whenever you see parentheses, it means you're multiplying. So, do you guys see this 5 out front? It needs to be distributed, or you need to give it out to every single part inside the parentheses. So, it needs to be distributed to the A and to the B. So you would get 5a plus 5b, okay? So that's how we distribute. We give the number out to everything inside the parentheses. We distribute it. All right, so for number one, we are going to be distributing that 2, and it goes to both terms. So we're going to get 2 times x plus 2 times y. And 2 times x, we just say 2x plus 2y. That's it. Sometimes you're going to have three terms inside your parentheses. You need to distribute that 5 to every single term. So we are going to have 5 times 2 plus 5 times 2a minus 5 times 3b. So we distributed that 5 to every single term. Then we just simplify. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 2a is 10a. Minus 5 times 3b is 15b. And last, um, for number 3, we need to distribute that 9 to every single term. So we have 9 times 7m plus 9 times n minus 9 times 6p. Do you guys see how our 9 got distributed to every single term? So we get 63m plus 9n minus 54 Um, I just want to give this reminder, you need to be very careful with your negatives. I want to remind you guys that if you have a negative number times 
another negative number, you will always get a positive. So a negative times a negative is a positive. All right, so for number four, we are distributing negative two. So be very careful with that. We're distributing it to all four terms. So we have negative two times four plus negative two times a plus negative two times five b plus negative two times eleven c. Now let's um, simplify. Negative two times four is negative eight. Negative two times a is negative two a. Negative two times five is negative ten b. And negative two times eleven c is negative twenty two c. That is your final answer. All right. Um, for number five, we are distributing negative twelve to every single term. Here's an example where you need to be very careful with your negatives. So we have negative 12 times 4w minus negative 12 times 9x minus negative 12 times 12y plus negative 12 times 3z. Okay. So negative 12 times 4w is negative 48w. Now look here. Here we have our negative times a negative. That gives us a positive. Okay, 12 times 9x is 108x. Be careful here as well. Negative times negative makes a positive. So we have positive 144y. Negative 12 times 3z is negative 36z. That is your final answer. So just remember, please be very careful with those negatives. Make sure that they turn into positives. All right. Um, here's one that um, a lot of people tend to mess up on. What if there is just a negative out front? If you just see a negative out front, you still need to distribute. Please don't forget to distribute your negative. I want to remind you guys that negative is like saying negative 1. Okay? So let's think of that as a negative 1. It needs to be distributed to every single term. So we get negative 1 times 2x plus negative 1 times 3y plus negative 1 times z. Now we just simplify. Negative 1 times 2x, negative 2x. Negative 1 times 3y, negative 3y. And negative 1 times z is negative z. And that's your final answer. Um, for number two, we distribute that negative again to all three terms. So we get negative one times 15 minus negative one times a plus negative one times b. So negative one times 15 is negative 15. Once again, here's that double negative. A negative times a negative makes a positive. Okay? Positive A. And then negative 1 times B is negative B. So please be very careful with those double negatives. It should turn into a positive. This is your final answer. And something else you're going to see on your homework tonight, um, we are going to be multiplying things with decimals. Um, so it is important to know how to do this because you will not be using a calculator on anything this year. Okay, um, so when we're multiplying decimals, you set up your problem in the same way that you would set up a normal multiplication problem. And I like to just multiply through and worry about the negatives after. So let's forget, sorry, the decimals. Let's forget the decimals are there. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times two, 6 is 6. Now let's multiply in our 10 space, so put your 0 in the 1s. 
3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 6 is 18. Okay, then we add going down. Now we need to figure out where our negative goes. The way you do that is you count how many spaces you move the negative um, on the top. So I moved it 1, 2. I'll show you guys that again. I move my decimals 1, 2. So since I move my decimals two spaces in the top, I do the same thing in the bottom. I move my decimal two spaces. So my answer is 19.22. All right. Um, and for number two, first of all, let's look at our negatives. I have a negative times a positive. I know my answer is going to be negative. Now let's do the multiplication. When you multiply, you always put the longer number on top. So I'm going to put 4.38 on top and 2.4 below it. We multiply. 4 times 8 is 32. So we're going to be adding that 3. 4 times 3 is 12 plus 3 is 15. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 1 is 17. Now let's multiply our 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And 2 times 4 is 8. So now I add going down. Okay, um, the first thing I'm going to add is my negative, because we already determined that our answer is negative. Now we need to figure out where our decimal point goes. So let's count on top. One, two, three. We move our decimal point three spaces. One, two, three. So my final answer is negative 10.512. And that is all for today.